opening now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the planning board meeting for October 1st. How exciting. Uh, first order of business is open forum. First, we have Mike Green calling in due to geographical dislocation or whatever. And we're hoping that we can get it working so we can actually hear you later on, Mike. Does anybody else staff? Just th go ahead. Got you. Uh, just if anyone is here tonight for 11 Brookside Road, that applicant has requested withdrawal without prejudice um, for the board this evening. So withdrawal without prejudice due to a lack of effective quorum. So. Okay. Madam Chair, just uh, for uh, public service announcements, a uh, reminder to commuters that uh, frequent Oak Hill Road and Groton Road this week is. Uh, would be a good time to avoid that area. They're doing full depth reclamation. So through the intersection, there'll be detours and traffic delays in place. They started today, got a good start on it, uh, but that, that would be consideration for the traveling public. And we ask people uh, to travel slow in work zones, uh, keep our workers safe, and that all businesses are open uh, for normal hours of operation. Uh, and then also, the Mass DOT working with the, the resident engineers, we asked them to extend the project limits all the way up to the driveway of the O'Neill landscaping uh, project that you previously approved. That was something that he was um, uh, going to be doing, but they were there doing the work, so it was a matter of them going a little bit longer, and they did. Uh, the contractor agreed to do that. Uh, and uh, O'Neill will will have further conversations with him about uh, his contribution towards some of the landscaping he had offered through correspondence. <coughs> Instead of doing the paving, he, he's a landscape uh, contractor, and we are going to have to do some landscaping improvements after that project is, is when everything is completed for infrastructure. So he's offered to be a part of that, um, which was which we think is very which is a great trade off because he's not a paving contractor. <clears throat> and then finally, Madam Chair, to, uh, today's October 1st, so the Town of Westford filed its notice of intent with the EPA for uh, the next permit series of, uh, for our stormwater management uh, permit that will be available online for people to look at. Uh, I'll try to get it online tomorrow on the Westford Engineering Department website. Uh, that's the permit that uh, you'll, it, you will reach out to you guys indirectly. Uh, because of the things that you'll be in, in, in including in your permits and your projects going forward that will make uh, the, the water and natural resources in Westford uh, uh, better than they are today. So it's what you're proposing is effective it, today? It's, it was filed, it was, yeah, with the selectmen approved it last week and it was, uh, um, Recorded with the with the EPA today. It's just the it's the notice of intent. It's kind of like a just a tax form type of a thing. It has all the things that you have to do. But we'll be working on the actual plan for that with the various departments that will be impacted by this new permit. And that's this again is the permit that the EPA requires the town to have in order to discharge uh, storm water and melting snow into our natural resources, uh, waters, streams, wetlands, uh, and, uh, and they're requiring that we clean it up before it gets there. So that, th that's some of the things that we'll be doing in order to make Westford a better place to live. Thank you. Josh, do you have anything? Um, uh, I do. Uh, just a reminder that we do have a town uh, meeting uh, coming up on the uh, 15th, uh, two weeks from today. Uh, starts at Seven o'clock. It's at the Abbott School. That's a new time <coughs> per vote of the previous town meeting. They changed the time to seven seven thirty. I will not be here, so you will be in charge. Okay. Uh, just one comment. Uh, shortly after this board last met, there was a tragic story in town. Most people probably saw of a runner actually getting hit and killed uh, near Technology Park, and it just made me reflect on the work that this board does um, with regard to you know uh, sidewalk funds and lighting and things like that, that that come up before us. So it was just something that um, kind of struck home with me, and you know made me think about the the important work that this board does, and made me reflect a little bit. So I wanted to comment on that. Darren, do you have anything? 
Nothing. Barry, no, I'm Mike, good. do you have anything for open forum? <coughs> Mike, are you with us? I do. I I do have a question for you, Mike. Did you have a hard stop time tonight? <coughs> uh, just after nine. Uh, nine p.m. Okay. And a reminder that because we do have somebody remoting and we do all votes do have to be roll call. Anybody from the audience open forum? If not, um, I would like to get on to our first public hearing and I'm hoping we can get it done within 20 minutes so we can try and keep Mike on schedule. Welcome. Uh, I did watch the last meeting on, on cable TV and I filled in the form so I'll I have. Yep, the executed Mullen form. Thank you for that. I'm all, I'm all okay. And my understanding is the last time, basically, we're ready to vote on it, close the public hearing, um, but you decided to leave it open for town I did staff vote. I did to vote. a draft decision. Draft decision. No, taking a Mullen. Okay. Yep, yep, I got it. Yep. I know. Uh, my comment is just a reminder that it is preliminary. So even though in the draft in the draft decision it said that um, they they voted three to one to approve the subdivision plan proposing a 23 lot open space residential that the uh, final the uh, for the record confirmation on the number of houses and units allowed will be at the actual when we get to the actual plan not not here so I know that uh, there were a few issues that we had asked you to take care of uh, regarding uh, safety on, on Nutting Road and, uh, and um, lot sizes and things like that. So um, <clears throat> personally, I did have uh, a couple comments. I, I just need to get out my ruler and confirm the, uh, the, um, the lot lines that we they did get to 200 feet. I, I, I am still concerned about the, on the conventional one, the validity of having the uh, two streets coming out where they are because they are directly in front of houses and there's a difference in coming out in front of a house that's set back 50 or more feet from the road versus a house that's basically right on the edge of, of the, uh, the right of way and, and the effect of um, Glare, so I'll be interested in, in that and might not be so favorable. And just a reminder um, that one of the uh, comments from engineering was that you have to uh, let us know whether the roadways would remain private or be intended for public use. And personally, because of the, the number of houses and issues that we've had with other private ways, I, I strongly urge you to make this a public road and I, I would be looking for a public road. Uh, Kathleen, 70, yeah. Kathleen Coyle, 73 Nutting Road, yeah. and that is the intent. Okay, great, perfect. So with that, basically just to approve the draft. Yeah, so it's just if this board has any comments or, or changes and we sometimes put a reminder a comment at the end of the preliminary advisory comments reminding them that it's you know preliminary and um, we had something in previous previous preliminary decisions yeah. if you want us to add that it wouldn't be another number it would just be yeah advisory we can we can do that it's a simple change I think that would be a good idea okay okay do you Darren Dylan uh, I will simply say that um, if this plan gets taken to the definitive stage, then I'll be very interested to see what we plan to do with sidewalks and access to and from the parcel based on comments that I think were made through the course of the, okay. the meetings. Either of you have any comments on the draft decision? I'm looking forward to see what they come up with. Great. Mike, do you have any comments on the draft decision? Yeah, just a comment uh, to add a provision that we advise the applicant to uh, address the feasibility of construction on lot one given the uh, topography of both the uh, cut roadway cut slope uh, and topography of lot one I brought that up at the last meeting regarding the you know, 20 to 25 foot cut uh, at the entrance of that east west side uh, entrance road 
Is this for the conventional or the open space? For a conventional, again, this, this, these comments, we talked about lots 10 and 11 here in item one uh, for the, the setbacks and so forth, but um, specific on lot one and the uh, roadway, uh, roadway cut and topography of lot one for both access and uh, uh, to that lot. So it uh, should be easily addressed at uh, definitive, but I'd like it addressed. So. We, could, we could just modify... Um Advisory note number 10, that's more generic. I'm going to add that. Which preliminary advisory comments here? Yeah. We can incorporate that, that's fine. Okay. What's like specifically lot one or? Yeah, we should be, if he has a specific lot that he's concerned about, yeah. we should let the applicant know that so they can address yeah. that particular lot. So it's so. Particularly lot one or yep. for, uh, topography and roadway cut. Okay. Um, that, is that it, Mike? And was there something in here for, for the glare in the conventional? Yes. Uh, it's generic. Number six, board advises the applicant to address yeah. headlight glare okay. concerns raised right. by butters. Good. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I think and just again the, because it's preliminary and it's meant to guide you yeah. guys. It, I think it's um, you know one thing that's been brought up by you know the audience and the, some of the board members is uh, access to the open space and the design. So really, kind of maximizing that design for access to the open space and you know yep. not, functionality. Yeah, of functionality. It. <clears throat> okay. I don't think we really need to hear comments because we re actually heard everything before the vote. So, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Just yep. if there, if the public Please. is here and the yeah. hearing is still open, you know, maybe or just on the draft okay. decision. Okay. Yep. Right. Any comments on the draft decision? If you've had a chance to look at it. Nope. Okay. Motion to close. Public so moved. Second. 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 Gary? Aye. Mike? Aye. Darren? Aye. Kate? Aye. Dylan? Aye. I'm going to learn your names. <laughs> 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 okay, so we've closed public hearing. A motion to approve the draft decision as modified tonight. So moved. Second. Okay. Gary? Aye. Mike? Uh, question for process. We already took the vote on the preliminary. Okay. And I was I voted in the uh, against it. I'm fine from a document standpoint. So Jeff, it's more a question. What are we? We're just voting on the form of the document at this point. That's that's correct. So you could be okay, opposed to approving it, but you could be fine with the format and the content of the decision. Okay. Aye. Thank you. What's your vote then? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Darren. Aye. Kate, aye. Aye. There we go. Good luck. Thank you. On to the real work. Okay. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. If I could, um, um, who uh, seconded that? Okay. I thought you. He seconded um, to close. Move. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the vote. vote on the uh, draft. Gary. Gary. Okay. Yeah. Next public hearing item is 71 Powers Road. Are they here? Yes. Uh, I saw Paul yes. up there. Yeah, yeah I just waved him in. So, how, how do I get, I, I can't scroll past this, these plans. Exactly. I'm trying to, we're on uh, 71 Powers Road. Yes. And I am going to recuse myself because I am in a butter. So, all yours. Are you sure? And just, I'm trying to get things moving along because 
I'm trying to get through all the public hearings by nine o'clock because of Mike's schedule. Okay. So. Okay. All right. <coughs> all in favor? <laughs> of what? Aye. Thank you. 71 Power Road, while uh, Greg Roy from Deshaun and Dillis puts up the plan, I'll introduce myself and I'm Paul Alf and I represent the, the applicant. We're, we haven't seen the board, we have not been before the board since July. Why is that? Not because we don't love you, it's because we've been before the Conservation Commission. Notwithstanding the property has 13 acres of land, there are wetlands in the property that limits the envelope within which we can uh, operate. This is pretty much uh, like the last plan that you we've formally submitted to you. It actually shows um, less paved area than in the first plan we submitted. And every time we've gone to the Conservation Commission, we've reduced the footprint of the property um, a bit to decrease the work in the wetlands buffer. And each time we go to the Commission, the Commission says, mm, almost. You, you get to move it back. So what essentially happens is that the retaining wall in the parking lot gets pushed in further and further away from the wetlands. And since we've last seen you, we've lost uh, one uh, unit off the end of this um, uh, building. The roadway has been pushed up in this direction to get away from the riparian zone and from the wetlands. And n next, we're about to lose another unit uh, back here. We showed that to the Conservation Commission, and the project is getting smaller. <coughs> And there's another plan we're working on now where the projects can get smaller still. And with the, with the, we're to lose some building space or not, we're not quite sure yet, but we are going to end up having less uh, paved area than we do now. So what's been the consequence of a reduction in the paved area? Well, a couple of things. Uh, one, when we were here last July, uh, you reminded us about the parking requir requirement of one space per 200 square feet. So there's an awful lot of parking that's required for this use, notwithstanding that in our client's experience and the experience of other users, this type of operation doesn't generate much in the way of traffic and parking. Typically, these types of um, operations is no, very little, well, never say no, never say zero, but very little uh, customer um, visits to the property. Uh, the, most of the deliveries and, and meeting with customers is done at customer sites in off-site, so these don't generate an awful lot of traffic. So what we have proposed is that under the bylaw, you can apply for a special permit, so it's not necessary to construct all of the parking spaces all at once. If you can show a plan that you could construct the parking spaces, and if in actual experience the building commission makes a determination that the parking is inadequate, then you have to build the parking spaces. So the most recent application you have shows a parking deck on the property to compensate for the additional parking spaces that we believe we will never have to construct. But on the other hand, we meet the requirements of the bylaw by showing they can be constructed. And if ordered by the building inspector, they would be constructed. So that's, that's before you. We also have the engineering department's letter. Uh, we received that last week. Um, Greg is going over, the, he's been over the letter. Uh, he's going to work with the engineering department. There's nothing in the engineering department's letter that's insurmountable. It's just one of those things that they need to go through, make some tweaks to the plan. And ultimately, as we get to the final plan where we're going to satisfy the, the Conservation Commission next time we see them, then we will have the final plan upon which all the engineering changes will be shown and we'll have the final plan will be good for the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. So basically, the layout of the project remains the same. The number of units is reduced somewhat. The paved area has been reduced significantly. We're requesting the special permit for the parking um, and the engineer engineering review. We feel um, next time through, uh, we should get a uh, we should get an A as opposed to the B plus that we got in the last engineering review. What did I forget? That's a good summary. All right. I, um, I do appreciate getting the comments. I, I know that we have. Plans been, as Paul has summarized, the plans been moving around a little bit, and I do, but I do appreciate having the engineering review comments out in front of us so that we can kind of put everything together macroscopically with things we're getting from the commission, anything that we might get from you this evening, as well as things that we had from you in the past, and the engineering comments to try to uh, take care of this thing. Uh, one more crack. So, 
The other thing we, we did is back in July, there was some concerns from, I think, the board members, and for, at least from one of Butter, regarding what uses could come to the property. And we promised to give you a, a, a description of many of the uses which are prohibited, and also the rules and regulations. We forgot to submit them in time, but we submitted them today. We know it's not within the time frame, but you have them now, so be part of the record. Um, I won't go over them because it's a long list of things that are prohibited, uh, but we finally submitted them. Sorry they didn't get in in time for us to be able to digest them this evening. Rick? That's a good summary. Uh, anything from staff? Jeff? I'm going to defer to Josh on this. Okay. Um, the uh, planning department hasn't uh, gotten these plans as of uh, yet. This is the uh, first time uh, we have uh, laid eyes on it. Um, so as there are changes, um, we will have to take a uh, look at those uh, changes. Yeah. Um, we're, we're in the same situation, although we our review does uh, uh, capture some of the the highlights of the project. I, I don't, as you can see from our comments, I don't know that we share uh, Council's optimism on uh, the impacts of traffic and uh, once you especially discuss tonight the parking uh, and the use, the type of use, we'll have a better handle on that. We are, we are recommending that, uh, that the project be reviewed for its traffic impacts to the neighborhood, but of course that's your uh, discretion uh, to waive. All right, go to the board for comments. Gary? I'm just concerned about the access getting onto Powers Road with the traffic, like like, um, like you were just saying. So I'm, I'm, I'm just a little concerned about that. So I'd like to see like an impact study or something if, if uh, we decide to go that route. Now is that something, Paul, because I know it's referenced in in uh, the traffic impact studies referenced in the engineering notes. Right. Is that something that's Part of this review process automatically because of the size, or do we have to specifically call that out, request it? I mean, uh, we're still kind of working on the final can size I, too. So. Can I ask a very specific question on this? By having to move the road up, what is the distance between the midline of your exit from the property and the midline of the road that intersects Powers Road? How what's your way there? Yep. Good, good because question. while it's not a road, it's it's an entrance, and there is some guidelines for that so I'm rough here yeah that's <laughs> fine but uh, we're roughly 50 feet yeah I mean so correct me if I'm wrong bylaw calls for two roads having 200 feet roads 150 feet. So I think roads. it was 100 150 right and while again it's a not a road but it's not a road it's a driveway entrance into a facility it's it's, it's a pretty close shot to that road that's correct, and that that is one of the, we've made comment to that is a consideration. Uh, it is not, you know, whether it's in the regulation or not. It's not something that is desirable mm. uh, with a neighborhood, you know, the size that it that they have down mm. there. There will be vehicles coming and going all day, and uh, you know, without the correct alignment of the driveway with the road or um, you know, uh, some other recommendations from a transportation engineer how to prevent the left turn accidents that are potential mm. are, are have a potential there. But you know, it's that's just something that you know that's that's why there are experts that do this. Yep. yep. And I guess in my follow up to that too is that's a state road, right, Paul? Correct. So is that does the state have their own criteria for such an intersection, or that would they? Yeah. Mass, Mass DOT, uh, when they get an access permit application from the applicant, will be extremely thorough in its review uh, for access. They will look at everything, and then they'll pass it on to their colleagues and have them look at everything. And they'll go find a third group of colleagues, and they'll all look at it. Now yeah, you're exaggerating. It's just uh, there's <laughs> two rounds of reviews. <laughs> Mass DOT will go through uh, everything from environmental impacts to uh, traffic and accessibility, site distance, 
Uh, they take their roads really se very seriously, especially the volumes. You know, they'll want to know all that. Right. Septic for the for the lot is in the front yard, in between Powers Road and. Uh, Last time we were before you, that was the case, yep. and that was one of the things we sh we revised as part of uh, from what we heard from you folks, because yep. there was a conflict between our landscaping proposal in the front. So we've actually redesigned that now to be in the back, completely in the back, the primary and the reserve to be in the back on the parking now. So. Okay. Uh, on the state highway question, uh, based on the shorter uh, frontage off of Powers Road, is that something that gets considered as well by the state in terms of if they ever wanted to widen that road? The feasibility of doing that. I've never, I've never seen that to be germane in terms of traffic because site the frontage varies from city to city, town to town, and, yep. and some, you know, have twenty foot setbacks, ten foot setbacks. Okay. So I've never, I've never seen that as an issue. Okay. If the state, if the state did want to widen it, they would just do an MRM taking yeah. it, got it, and widen it. Okay. But the setback to the property line is still, is it about 46 and a half feet or so? Right. Yep. Yes. So, I mean, even yeah. most takings fall well, well, yeah. well, well below that. Short of that. Great. And even the, the way we have the proposed roundings and things could, could accommodate that. Great. That is a good question. What is it that triggers the need for the traffic review? Is it just the engineering department's letter or is something more formal required? Well, your jurisdiction is in. 9.3 A, 4.6 D, and, and 6, and 6 D. The, the pedestrian and vehicular access traffic assessment. So, so it's up, the threshold is, uh, is, it, is it 20 vehicles, 20 vehicles 20 per 5,000 gross square feet of buildings. So we would first either have to submit something from a traffic expert saying we don't meet the threshold, or if we do, we would have to submit some additional data. I, I would invite that this is, you know, this is certainly going to uh, make it a lot easier going to the uh, DOT access permit process. You know, if they have a if they have a traffic study, just it would make it go smoother for them as well. But, um, So what I anticipate is, as part of that process where we're going to respond to the engineering department's questions, we'll get our traffic information to the engineering department and either we won't hit the threshold or if we do, we'll have to submit additional information. Uh, I think at the same time, I'd like to think that the engineering review will support our conclusions regarding parking demand and then we don't necessarily meet the standard one space per 200 square feet, which essentially applies to most of the uses in the town of Westford. And, um, and that will help s support our, our special permit request as well. When you were before conservation, you showed them the plan with the, with the parking deck in case that was needed, and so they were aware of that, and they it, factored that into their feedback to yeah, you on. Yeah. And, yeah, and quite frankly, the, the <coughs> Conservation Commission really isn't all that concerned about what's happening on top of asphalt. Gotcha. So, but, but they understood that we had to do that because we pleaded with, with them, why do we have to go back even further? You're conforcing us to build a parking deck here. Yeah. And they were unbelievably un, un, unsympathetic. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just continue to... Make the uh, the wall. Yeah, just to continue on the traffic too. I think uh, you know, exacerbated now by the fact that it is kind of getting pushed in. Is you know, I, I want to. I'd like to have en engineering certainly take a look at the turning inside that. Right. Yep. We have, that was a comment. We yep. have asked. Yeah. We have asked that, uh, and I'm sure the fire department echoes uh, their uh, fire prevention plan. And their efforts on the property to to engage. So I think uh, you know central to the traffic and the parking issue are the use and the, the use group of this property. And, and without some clarity there, it it becomes a challenge for us to understand what kinds of traffic volumes there will be now or in the future. Uh, so without any kind of a a, a thorough understanding of what all those little squares will be filled with uh, it's it's you know we're shooting in the dark and and so that uh, that our instinct at that point is to 
uh, be as conservative as possible and anticipate the worst case scenarios. You know, that's if without understanding what those uses will be and then understanding that there will be the same uses tomorrow as they are today when you approve it, um, you know, is the challenge for us in your we're, we're kind of, we're just, we're feeling <coughs> around in the dark uh, in terms of that because everything we do for traffic generation or ITE manuals uh, and, um, you know, making it, having an opinion on how many people will be, how many spaces will be needed to park, you know, customers, equipment, you know, employees. It's, it's all based on what the uses will be. Right. We're prepared to respond to all of that. Okay. No problem. Mike, do you have any comments? Yeah, kind of taking a, can you hear me okay? Yep. I guess more a question either for the applicant or staff and taking a step back, um, even at the point of CBA variance, the, you know, it had certain assumptions for use. It had certain assessments for meeting or not meeting parking. And now we've got a proposed parking deck to at least make, meet minimum parking requirements. And I understand for the applicant's memo, we can waive that. But as it relates to intensity of use on the parcel, which I is is part of, have the has the scope of this as it relates to the variance changed? So I guess that's, if I may, that's a. Uh, this project has been a bit of a moving target. What we would envision if they move closer towards uh, an approval, we would obviously have to reconcile any differences with the zoning board decision. They would have to go back to the zoning board if they needed any um, modifications. And I think there was even a provision called out in the zoning board decision that allowed for such an opportunity, um, especially if it was deemed minor enough um, without a second public hearing. But if it's deemed substantial, then they might need a new public hearing if the modifications were too severe. Oh, okay. But that's the basis of which we're here today, obviously, is that variance, but at least one parameter of it. So, that's correct. Okay. Uh, the second question, more specific, and, and I, I may have missed it in the narrative or misunderstood it, but there was some comment about parking in the units themselves. Is that correct? Right. There's a uh... Part of the proposal is that uh, one of the spaces per unit be indoors in a garage. But the current plan, is that is that envisioned in the current plan? Because it doesn't show that access. And if it does, it then blocks a parking space at the unit. Or am I misunderstanding that, Paul? No, the, the current plan, the latest plan does show it, but since the the space behind it is going to be exclusively the property of the of that unit owner. They have absolute control over over the vehicles in the outdoor space and the indoor space. Again, we don't know uses of the public private types of uses, right? There is a public, so are we can we count those and say you can't park here because it's tenant parking? So I'm I'm just Getting back to the overall number, Paul, I'm just concerned that now we're, you know, slicing up parking yet again, right? So we're, it's going to be incumbent upon us to get some more uh, parking data to you for somebody who, as Paul said, is a parking expert to tell you what the projections are for these, these types of facilities. Uh, that's fine. General use means any type of stuff. But, okay, again, I guess just consistent concerns on, you know, overall intensity of use on this parcel and, and now how we're trying to, you know, fit it, so to speak. So, okay. Dylan? I'm good. Um, yeah, I think, so clearly you guys have a lot of feedback and you've made some changes and there are some more changes in the works. Um, obviously you've got the engineering comments, many of which are based on the current design, which will change a little bit. Right. And you can obviously incorporate a lot of those. Um, I think, obviously, a major concern is traffic 
impact on the road as well as internally um, that you've seen obviously you guys have seen tonight so um, I guess you're waiting and then oh you have a someone from the audience yes Kate Hollister, 25 Vinebrook Road, member of the uh, Vinebrook Trust. I have a question about the wall in the back. According to the plans, it's eight feet tall, or the exposed part is eight feet. And I'm just thinking, given the layout, that's kind of dangerous even with a, uh, <coughs> a chain link fence there. So I was wondering if you can set this building more into the ground to try and bring it lower so you don't have to have such a high wall? Through you, I'll respond. Um, we actually have done that. Um, so between this plan and this plan, which is the one we showed the Conservation Commission last week, um, again, not before your board yet, so I do apologize. We have lowered the site uniformly. To reduce the size of that wall, so that was definitely something. That was also a, um, a comment raised by um, by the engineering department as well. So we'll, we'll certainly have that. The next plan revision will will address that issue. We are trying to get things as as low as we can. And there's, I mean, I guess that's the one good thing about moving the wall a little bit further back is we have an opportunity to shrink that a little bit. So that we're taking advantage of that. Um, <laughs> sort of a byproduct of that process with the Conservation Commission is to reduce that wall a little bit, so. Great, thank you. Great. Anything further from staff? <coughs> Jeff, do you want to coordinate that or Josh through uh, the applicant? Yeah. Anytime. That, would that be no, it's a, amenable? It's, it's a lovely site. I think it will help the board understand that whatever we propose will be an improvement over what is currently there. Right. <clears throat> what is the speed limit on Powers Road? Is it is it 30 or is it 40? Do you know off the top of your head? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I there is a, excuse me, Mr. <coughs> Chair, there has been a uh, Powers Road for our commuting public, it's wise to know, is one of the few roads that actually has a regulated speed. I believe it is 40 miles an hour. I think it is. In that section, it goes 30, 35, 40, 35. Yeah, and those signs, thank you. Those, but uh, uh, that means that a speed study, and that would explain why it goes 30, 35, 40. They're actually based on um, operator behavior in the 85th percentile. But DOT has done a regulated speed out there and they're posted in that section, I think, is 40 right by here. So clearly, four. traffic is a, a big concern. Yeah, and, and I think that that is something that we need to demonstrate with some, with some data, with some expertise. I'd like to think that uh, the next time we see you, that the engineering issues will be resolved with the engineering department, and we'd like to think that their concern as regard to the number of parking spaces and, and traffic will likewise be resolved through the same mechanism. And um, if we end up in one of those blank spaces where there isn't much happening, but the but the engineering department is happy, we. We hope we can compel somebody to start working on a draft so we can have a lovely, productive uh, meeting when we see you again. And Mr. Chair, that would come in the form of a traffic scoping letter. I would anticipate that that is the prelude to a, a traffic impact assessment study if that's the first step. So a traffic scoping letter, uh, is, which is in, in guidelines for preparing in the contents of a traffic scoping letter are available to council and the designer uh, and th that that will tell us what their their theories are on the on traffic and impacts and then we make an assessment uh, okay and, and that um, which um, may be as a peer review if you want to consider establishing a, a 53g account for that if you if timeline is an issue here, uh, 
So the process is that we, we submit the traffic, traffic scoping letter, the engineering department reviews it, and either makes recommendations that everything is fine the way it is, or they make, um, they provide a scope for further traffic study? Uh, we would then come back, we would, the, the engineering department doesn't make that decision, the planning board does, but uh, I'm thinking if time is, in, is sensitive here, mm -hmm. then it, it would go quickly if it were uh, just sent, if it was reviewed by the, a peer review, our peer review traffic consultants, as opposed to, you know, if we get it and we can't make any heads or tails out of it or make any sense or, or sound tra transportation judgments on the content uh, that, that may preclude a step of you having to come back to the board and then establishing the peer review consultants. So does it make sense for us to take an action tonight to set some funds available in case? You could authorize uh, the staff work with the engineering department to and the applicant to establish a 53G account in case it's needed. So it could delay an extra meeting. Potentially. Yeah, for a motion it's all is just occurring to me as we speak, but I think that would be the right yeah. so motion to authorize staff to work with the applicant <coughs> to establish a 53 G account in the event that it's necessary for uh, if needed this item all right. Motion is there a second second All right, all those in favor Gary aye Mike Aye. Aaron says aye Dylan aye All right Right. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. All right, great. And I think obviously the the next set of plans that we'll see will incorporate the later the, the, the most recent stuff from the conservation. And Absolutely. Next set of plans will be the final plans. Right. <laughs> we know what we need to do with Transcom. So is there a pleasure of the board to? Hey, yeah, Mike, go hey, ahead. Darren. Yeah. Yeah. There was there was one other quick question. I may have changed the plans in terms of front landscaping. Uh, on Powers Road, there's uh, at least retention basins, and I think there used to be a filtration basin there. So I don't see that. Uh, it may have been on the previous plan in terms of a planting plan. Is that available in the plan set or coming? It's coming. We we appreciate that that comment, and you'll have that in the uh, updated plan set. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments from the audience? Is there a motion to, is the, uh, would post, would continuing to the next meeting make sense for you guys, or would that be uh, too soon? Greg says yes. Is that October 15th? No. 22nd, right? Correct. October 22nd. Five of All right. Is Which uh, could uh, dovetail nicely if our, since our transportation consultant will be here for Anticipate, anticipate them being here for Spalding on that night. Right? Okay. So, really? All right. Is there a motion to continue the uh, public hearing? Just if I may, if we need any extensions. Um, They're forthcoming. Okay, great. Thank you. Motion to continue PB 1817 for 71 Powers Road to the next planning board meeting here. Uh, I, yes, October 22nd. Meeting room. Two or one. Hmm? Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Gary? Same. Aye. Mike? Just stay. Okay. Just stay. Aye. Darren says aye. Dylan? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. We are now ready for our next public hearing, which is uh, 22 Town Farm Road for a site plan review. And I need to recuse myself from this. Okay. Thank you. Now, as I stated before, Mike really needs to leave around 9 o'clock, so I'm going to try and divvy up the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we'll see how far we get. Good luck. Uh, we yeah. will I mean, uh, get Chris, it done. Chris, the public can't see it from there. So yeah. Do you need an easel? Well, we need a bunch of them. Um, 
and you may not even need them. I just brought them we'll so see. you'd have these. We can Great. pass them around, whatever, because they're larger scale. But whatever you It would want. be nice to get them electronically, because I know Mike can't see them. You do have them already. Them. Okay, they're, already. They're back in July that went out. Okay. Now the first order of business is to talk about the filing fee. No, no fee, no talk. That's right. So uh, w what we've... Um, what we're proposed to do is to volunteer significant work as part of stormwater um, control features that aren't required by the bylaw. Uh, there's no exterior construction outside that, that dictates the requirement for stormwater, um, stormwater management per permit or construction in the parking lot. Our client has submitted a comprehensive list of the types of things that it'd like to do out in the site as well as a plan indicating where that work would be done. And um, because of the voluntary nature of uh, that work, as well as the, um, as well as the fact that the building is staying right where it is, it's an existing building, it's a, a modification of an existing site, and the board does not have a separate fee schedule for a modification of an existing site in an existing building. Uh, for those reasons, we've requested a, a waiver of the site plan review, <coughs> review fees. And um, in the past, we've stated we would not forgive the entire amount, but we would be willing to discuss a reduction based on the amount of work that you are going to that you have coordinated with engineering for stormwater management. So you want to talk about that? So we submitted a, uh, an estimate of what the work would, uh, would cost. Uh, the board saw that estimate before the last meeting. Uh, the board. Did we? I don't recall seeing it. But oh, sure. It's, it, was in the, it was in the package last, Very last the summer. page of the summary. And the uh, do do total dollar amount was $75,900. And I think at the last meeting you quibbled about it. It's a nickel here, a dime there, some of the things. But nevertheless, it's a substantial sum of money that they're proposing to, to bring to the improvements to the property. Now, some of the work has already been done. Um, and the other work will continue to, to proceed to make the site better. But part of the cleanup of the site has already uh, resulted in some of these improvements being, uh, being in place. Engineering, you have worked with them on this? Uh, yeah, we've been through uh, a couple iterations of their proposed uh, strategy for making improvements, and I think they've given enough here, and if the language is appropriate in the decision, they've given us enough to work with them uh, to uh, make the improvements that they're talking about, and we will gladly report back to the planning board in the event that we find that they are not making uh, the improvements to our satisfaction uh, or if we are if if mr yule is of the opinion that something is not necessary but we are of the opinion that it is working with staff including the our planner and our conservation agent and and summarizing our opinions we'll definitely come back and let you know that you know, we're not getting what, what it is that you desire, and that is what I think Mr. Yule already wants to do is a better looking property, but a property that has less of an impact on a, a water resource that's very important to the town, Stony Brook. So do you have any kind of a written agreement as to the type of work, and is this work that would go above and beyond what would be considered as normal maintenance? Apart from what's in the area? decision itself. Well, we have the, the supplemental package that was submitted describing the nature of the work as well as the plan and that those items have been incorporated into the draft decision. So that, I think, is the standard that our client would be required to meet or exceed. That's 25 pages of details. Okay. So I think, Madam Chair, if I may I say <laughs> what, what uh, uh, and, I, and I understand the reasons for some of the ambiguity in, in the proposed improvements because each thing is very site sensitive and so on and so forth. So uh, I anticipate that we'll make that work to our advantage in, in, in going our back and forth with, with uh, Chris Yule and 22 Farm Road will be 
engaging. So there, there was a number thrown or put in, in some somewhere like reducing the amount to thirty one hundred dollars or something like that. I just vague that number. There was some vague recollection of about one third. I think Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you estimate the fee to be approximately was it ninety three hundred or? Um, so a third of that would be so, thirty one hundred. Yes. Um, the amount I calculated was ninety two hundred ninety three hundred um, uh, ninety three hundred uh, um, I do recall uh, thirty one hundred was uh, uh, batted around I uh, I'm not sure if that was ever actually uh, uh, landed on, but I I know uh, that's what they were recall. asking for in the past. Yeah. So, but I think what we're asking for in the past was twenty-five hundred dollars. To make it twenty-five hundred dollars, we have a deal. I like thirty-one. Right, probably do. Let me uh, get comments from the board, Mike. Since I heard you. Yeah, I'm just confused by the previous comments, and I'm looking at the draft decision, and, and Paul, maybe I misunderstood your comments either, Paul. Um, you know, obviously we haven't seen a plan or, or discussed this in for some months, but the proposed decision just, as it relates to the filing fee, references note 13 for just all work done in accordance with the plan. So it doesn't specifically call out a, a list of work items and so forth. So I, I think that, that was your question to Paul Sterrett. Yes. Are, are at least some improvements shown on that plan? I, I don't, I'm confused by kind of what we're discussing for these, you know, on-site improvements. What? And there's there a, sh give me four of them, a short list. What what I I guess what I was uh, saying was I thought that item thirteen would be, compile all, would be the list of all the plans even though some of those packages are narratives and not necessarily conventional uh, plans uh, the supplemental submission for example um, is in there because is it li oh there are number C, C yeah. yeah so if Everything that's in the 25 pages is in my, the my draft, is my understanding. So if we made, if we made item 13, that uh, these items f would be considered to be the plan, as the term is used in the decision, I think that would incorporate everything. Okay. Uh, supplemental proposed signage changes. Uh, uh, it okay. should be a comma proposed. Right. Water drainage repairs, or and. But, but all this is uh, proposed signage changes. For, oh, okay. And proposed stormwater. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, Madam Chair, if I may, I think what we, in my discussions in, in several visits to the property with the applicant, uh, there were there was just enough discussion for me to understand that there were items that he was going to do for stormwater. I'm not speaking to signs or or other uh, planning board items, but to the stormwater in particular, there were uh, approaches that the applicant was proposing, and that we we could work uh, more closely with them when the work was done to make sure that it was adequate, sufficient, and appropriate in its application. Is that sufficient for you, Mike? It is. Just make sure as it relates to fee discussion. We've got mm -hmm. two 13s in there, general order of conditions, and then project summary. So let's make sure we're referring to the right one. Yeah. That's, I was looking at the other, the wrong 13 there for a minute. Which oh, thing? right. So you're talking easy. about the one on page four? Yeah. That it's part of what was submitted. Yeah, 
How about, um, we still have to come up with a number for the filing fee before we actually start, continue our uh, public hearing. So, can I ask a question? Uh, I think I previously at the initial start uh, posed any uh, fee change, I think, given the uh, further discussion of some uh, site improvements, I'm willing to uh, provide some fee waiver, but I'm still unclear on what number we're talking about. So. Well, my proposal is 3100 The applicant doesn't like it, but that's my proposal. And that's in addition to the agreed upon conditions. Yeah. In approvements. Ba that's based on them doing this work and, and having conditions in there to ensure that they, they do do the work that resulted in the reduced fee. You, you mentioned that some improvements have already been made. Yes. Would you be able to quantify how many actual dollars have been invested to date making those improvements? Chris? Oh boy, I'd have to go back through and try to figure it out. I don't know. We weren't in bookkeeping mode when we did that. We just turned some of the crew loose and said, let's get this cleaned up and start investigating. And that was part of how we knew what all the conditions were. And some of it, the guys just cleaned it up because that's what we do. Gotcha. I've proposed 31. Do you want to propose some other m number? I mean, it's uh, no, not was, based on was, what I, they've done. I, I was hoping to get some clarity from my question, but that's, I'm no more clear now. So pick a number. Aaron, comments on my number? Um, I think 31 is reasonable. Um, you know, this is a, a unique situation where it's a site plan review for an existing building, but you know it has been going on for a while. I know staff has been out there a bunch of times, so and it's a big project. I mean, it's a, there's a it's a big building, it's a big property. It's obviously right up against Stony Brook, so there's a lot to it. So I'd be, I think 31 is, sounds fair to me, and the improvements that uh, the applicant has agreed to make, I think, are, are great, worthy of two thirds of the what would normally be the, the fee. Okay, do I hear a motion? Uh, so it's a matter of... A motion, is there a motion to reduce the filing fee from approximately $9,300 to $3,100? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mike, is no discussion? Anything, Mike? No. Okay. Madam Hearing Chair, do, we, yes, do you just want to tie that in some way to acknowledge the waiver of the fee is due to the applicants, if he's still volunteering for that dollar amount, to make stormwater improvements according to the materials submitted? Just want to get it done tonight. That's right. Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor of reducing the fee to thirty-one hundred dollars. Today is the public. Dylan. Aye. Kate. Aye. Darren. Aye. Mike. Aye. Aye. So it's reduced four to four zero zero. Thank you. You have a check. Madam Chair, for the for the record, did you open up the public? For, for comments? I don't know if there's anybody here from the public. For well, we're not at, oh, at that's a point. Right. We're just discussing the fee. True. When we get to that part, they will have a chance to talk. Thank you. Did you, you bring your checkbook? I didn't know I was supposed to, to be honest. I guess I could go back and see if we have one at the site, but um, the office is closed. If it's that critical, I'll well, go down and that, panhandle gosh. at the... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by the end of the week? Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. I'm not going to close the public hearing until we get it. Um, Paul, do you have a checkbook with you? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like me to do that? 
if you want. Yeah. Oh, if that'll settle it. If that, if that will get us out of here, why not? Because I can't, I can't technically I can't close it until I can't That's true. get that, uh, All right. that check. So, correct. Let's let him go at the Children's All Saints Hospital. Now, what's the second C -A -S -H. part of your Of what? So as far as the site plan itself. So since we have not met with you since April, and I know you have had a lot of discussions, I think we need a general review. Update. Update of uh, what modifications you've made. Um, I know Mike and Dylan had had uh, comments on the as-built plans before. I don't know if there have been any modifications to address their issues. Um, like uh, things not being on the plan, uh, maybe septic, uh, whatever. And then just what you finalized for your plans for the drop off, for signage, and protecting the kids and such. Um, That's all as noted on the proposal, all as discussed during the site visit. But, but I, but. Do you want to refresh your memory? I just want to refresh no. my memory. Yeah, refresh your memory. Sorry, and, I was thinking and, you were and anxious. I, and there was also ambiguity in the, uh, on the plans for the restaurant, how many s seats were going to be in the restaurant, so I would like a finalized number and know how that would affect the uh, parking along with existing uh, businesses that are in there, plus what you've learned from months of operation for what you need for the um and in my spare time i'll read the iliad and well the that's what you have those two here for <laughs> um that's a really long discussion I, i'm a little and unsure. i give you 10 i give you 15 minutes <laughs> all right um okay that you received back in July which shows the signage improvements. Um, it says everything that was discussed. Um, I could read down through the list but basically addresses the drop-off area. It addresses the traffic diversion over here um, and it talks about each of the don't park here areas that members were concerned about. Um, I don't want to go into all the details unless there's a specific question because none of it was controversial. It was all discussed and approved at that time. So, so this we put it on yeah. the plan to make it part of the record. Now are those signs in place now or are those? Some of them are in place now. Some of them were waiting for the final vote. You're not going to do anything until this is finished. Um, but there's nothing of controversy that I'm aware of, including um, this language in here to submit a final sign plan site separately and that will have its own requirements. So you have like seven, excuse me, seven areas and because yes. I was never clear before so you're, you were saying before you weren't going to put up signs you were just going to do lane markings or, or what? Well, we're going to do a combination okay. of the two. Um, and it's pretty well, the, the, the issue having to do with the drop off is right in this area. Um, and that is pretty well. Partly it just took a year or so of people getting used to the place. Like we had a tournament this weekend and it all went very smoothly and there were really no issues. And I think as time goes on, that will continue. Um, we sort of figured that in the first place, but you know, until it actually happens. Um, so that's going well and we continue to monitor the situation and we will. Part of it is because there were so many issues along the the edge of the parking lot where it abuts the river. Um, the drainage just really didn't work very well, and that affected the parking, it affected the traffic flow. And that was one of the areas we did, was we did a lot of cleanup in certain areas along here, and Paul and I have walked that. I don't, it's 1,100 feet long, and it would take me all night to just give you a summary of it. Um, the basic thrust of this whole thing is it's one of the best examples of sheet drainage that I've ever seen nearly dead flat. And one of the problems was created by the lack of maintenance that Courier was going through when it was in its nosedive operation. They just stopped doing all maintenance. So you got every bit of oddball stuff accumulating in the flat edge of the parking lot where it transitioned into the wetland. And 
we went and cleaned a lot of that out, which you have to do on a regular basis, or sheet runoff does not work. If you do clean those out, it works great, and there's been no ponding, no puddling, and it is collecting any material from the parking lot. And if you take a walk out here, you'll see, if, if there's been an event, you'll see soda cans and orange cones along the edge of the parking lot. That's where they're supposed to be. They're not in the wetland, they're not in the river. So it's really functioned quite well. Um, I'm really pleased with that. So what we're gonna do is just continue to work on that, continue to enhance it. You know, every step along the way, there are slightly different variations. And as the engineer said, there's just no way in hell they could ever do, put this on engineering drawings, because that's designed for huge improvements, like a full road cut or a full structural drainage system. This is really just very carefully working your way along the edge to work out the relationship between natural wetlands and the paved environment without expanding it. Um, yeah, let me uh, use the other thing for a second. Um, in this particular case, as again, this just reiterates everything that's in your proposal that goes back to June and July. Each of the types of conditions is detailed as you walk along. There are a couple of spots where there's a steep slope that eroded. That will need one type of treatment. There's some spots where vegetation hasn't been pruned. There's some spots where a lot of trash and debris is still accumulated. There's a six foot like a chain link fence. And there's odds and ends of details that you would never want to detail on an engineering drawing. But we have detailed it by section and using photographs. So for instance, Paul and I can go down there and pretty much agree on that. Right, well, here's this, let's do that. And um, I think that's about the best that can be done over there. And it's just something that we're gonna do ourselves. I don't know that we'll try to sub it out. And as long as it's our people, we all know what we're doing. And it'll take some time because you have to sort of work it gently. Um, but I think this really spells out everything that we've talked about without going into every detail. When Paul and I walked it, there were really no issues of controversy. We pretty much agree on everything. It's a wetland. It's a river. Don't screw it up. You know, I don't mean to be silly, but it kind of comes down to that at that point. Um, in terms of operations, maybe Sandra should give you a summary of that. Um, and then whatever's left, I'll answer questions. I think uh, one for of the, the record. Who you are? Who, who you are, are for the record, yeah. I'm Sandra Hobby, the uh, director of operations of the Millworks. Uh, so I think one of the things I recall that we talked a lot about was that front entrance, the drop-off area. And as Chris said, we have seen a, a great improvement in um, people's use of that um, that area, and they really have a nice flow um, coming coming up, dropping off, and driving right out which does not mean that the, we don't occasionally have people who park where they're not supposed to park, we do. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's really been, been just excellent because the people just, um, we encourage them to come right in, drop off, and then go so that the kids aren't coming through the parking lot. Um, most recently, we've been working on the lighting outside. I don't know if you saw the, the front entrance with the steps and going into the main okay so uh, we've worked a lot on the inside as far as our um, uh, front desk people really understand how that is the way to come in um, and it's great for me I see people I used to see them trying to come in through the side doors and the side parking lot they don't do it anymore and we now actually have signs up that say employees only and um, and once you've been in the facility you realize you really do want to use the main entrance the one that's and we've added a lot of signage to drive people to that main entrance. Um, it really is the fastest way to get wherever the people want to go. And when they come in that side door, it's, it's not advantageous. And once they've figured that out, they stop using that. Um, so the, um, I, I'm always out there observing, watching what's happening during events, during afternoons. You'll see, you know, around 4 o'clock or so, it starts to pick up with after school, you know, basketball practices. Right now it's basketball. Um, and, and a lot of that traffic is the drop off and drive right through. Um, I see the adults coming in early in the morning, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30. Okay. Some of them park way out because they want more exercise. 
you know, and then and come on in. But um, there's just I have not seen a lot of issues as far as that goes. We have used the front, the lawn area. We had an event there. It was uh, 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 Westford against substance abuse and um, suicide prevention. You know, we did some fundraising um, or opened it up for fundraising for those organizations and uh, the Westford um, uh, Foundation. But anyway, um, it was great. We were able to put them on the lawn because it was a nice day and that's where they wanted to be and they had some outdoor games. And the way the lawn is now, if you're facing the front entrance, um, you, you can access it right off of that platform, which you know maybe someday will be the outdoor seating for the restaurant, but um, for right now, it's just a great little, it, they could walk right over there and, and they were there, everyone was safe and it was set off back enough that um, the people had a good time. So that was good, because I got to see how that worked. That's always my concern, you know, is it, is it really <laughs> gonna work? Are we, is it gonna be a safety issue or not? Um, trying to think what else uh, has happened. Do you have any questions about anything that you I guess, well, <clears throat> since you guys have been operating for about a year, has the number of parking spaces been an issue? I mean, have you found that all the spots are full at any points or during tournaments or anything, or has it been sufficient? Yeah, no, it's absolutely been sufficient. And, um, and if I ever, and we haven't even, that parking lot that I was telling you that we use for employees, that's wide open all the time. I've never seen, you know, people don't even try to sneak in there, and there's plenty of, I mean, th that's plenty of parking in there if they wanted to use that, but they don't even need to because there's been so much parking. Um, as it's as the area has been cleaned up and opened up and, you know, the lines, painting the lines made a huge difference. And so, no, we haven't so had any issues. So don't park in the back of Building 12 either? But, yeah, right. So. You would also asked about the restaurant. Now, the restaurant has to go through a couple of steps, and w one of them, of course, is a public hearing with the Board of Selectmen. For a uh, for a license, but the plan we submitted uh, shows a maximum number of seats, and we don't think we're going to meet that number. We have uh, 173 is the maximum number of seats that would be in the restaurant. There's also a snack bar that we project uh, uh, 56 uh, seats. So you, it's you have this plan back in February. So it's okay, relatively yeah. small, but it's still going to take the uh, the licensing approval and. All that sort of jazz. I just wanted to confirm because there was confusion, at least for me, whether the restaurant was going to be 170 seats or 220 seats. So, plus plus the snack bar. So that's why I asked for clarification. There is the plan you have shows uh, 231 uh, in the restaurant and 56 <coughs> in the snack bar, but it's not going to be that big. Yeah. So I, I would like the plan anything that's part of the official package to have the correct number we don't have a correct number because we haven't designed the restaurant this well, was but you're stating it's going to be 170 maximum. and we said the plan that we gave you shows a maximum of that's really shows you that's the biggest it'll it'll ever be but if you have 230 for the restaurant plus 50 for the snack bar which is 270 and it's one parking space for every three seats. seats. That means you have to have 90 parking spaces just for the restaurant. But, but what was interesting about this, and part of the whole argument, is many of the customers are going to be there anyway. Maybe. So it would be double dipping in terms of parking requirements if we did that. I think the same parking standard, the parking standard we have established in the draft decision is for a comprehensive use of the project, and that is the client has to control the parking on site. If there's a problem with parking, we're going to get summoned back before the board. So if you want to put a, a maximum number of, of uh, seats in the restaurant, that's fine. But we're, we're not looking at the restaurant as a standalone impact upon parking. I just want to have a plan that represents yeah. what you're actually proposing and not just a number that, oh, gee, that's, that's not the right number. The uh, parking plan is dated February 8, 2017. The, excuse me, the, the restaurant plan is dated February 8, 2017. And that's for the 230 that's plus 200, 50. Which includes outdoor seating that doesn't exist. Well, I don't care. All I care is the numbers. 
Well, if it's a number that doesn't exist, I would recommend use the 170 number, not the 230. Well, then I want the plans to represent right. 170. It does. It no, does. It's, she said it's 230. No, no. This plan tables all the different totals, and you can add them up any which way you like. I would argue that it's a it's a very small number because everybody's already in the facility for another purpose. This is not a standalone restaurant, and we don't so, expect. So you are saying, for the record, that your proposed maximum for both the restaurant and the other one is 230. Yes. It's been so long since I've seen the plans. I was kind of hoping to have them in the packet again, but I, I just want to make sure that what we have on record reflects what they are claiming. Is that, <coughs> bless you. Chris, is that, is that, uh, plan you just held up is that part of the site plan no it's the plan we gave you back in February when this question came up and you wanted to discuss the restaurant Can we reference that in the site plan sure go right ahead Absolutely. no you reference yeah. it in your oh. it already was just because you've already received it can, can I can, oh, go ahead. can you remind me again what the total number of parking spaces there are in the lot I don't recall um, Four hundred and something. Right. Josh, so, for the record, I guess. I'd have to. I mean, my feeling is that I mean, at one hundred and seventy-three seats, what you need 50, 56 what? parking spots for one hundred seventy-three. One every three, right? Yeah. Yeah. So fifty-six or fifty-seven spots. Yeah. I mean, I think the snack bar. You can definitely make the case that the people who are going to be using a snack bar are going to be there for some other reason, right? Right. Exactly. It seems to me like they probably have parking if it's one hundred and seventy-three. Yep, I think I'm afraid. Okay, I just want it somewhere noted official that it's 170 plus 50. Uh, I had a comment on the plans themselves because you took, you just provided us plans that were given to you when you bought the place. And my concern is that we just have a plan that shows the humongous building, a, a humongous footprint that encompasses multiple buildings, and there aren't any lines on this plan that delineate that we are only talking about two, two sections of that huge building, because I don't want somebody to come back down the road and say, well, you. Planning board, you approved it for that whole space, and we're not approving it for the whole space. We're only approving it for what you are calling buildings, what, 17 and 18? I think it's written in the approval that it's 17 and 18. But they aren't on the plans. There's nothing on the plans that shows where buildings 17 right. and 18 are, so that needs to be on the plans. We've okay. been asking for that, I think. I don't, I, I don't think you've asked for it before, but we can provide I've been it. thinking it. <laughs> We haven't met with you for me to formalize it. I turned off my radio telemetry helmet. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll put it on. Uh, one question I guess I have, too, is when we were out there a while back, on the western part of the, the far western left part of that plan, there are a number of spaces there that were covered up with dirt and stuff. Is it, has that been removed, or is that the still in the process? The dirt pile is gone, mm -hmm. and we're about to start laying out the parking for phase two, at which point... There's still an awful lot of coming and going, and the concrete is stored there, and all the tractor trailers. It's a, it's a pretty busy place. Well, once construction starts to wrap up next door, we'll be out there doing all the layouts. Okay. Right. Mike, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, a couple real quick. Thanks. So, um, and Sandra, I think was commenting on that main entrance, and that you drop off at the main entrance, which. Um, you know, I think I've observed some similar issues there where, you know, cars are parking in what really isn't closest to the building, which really, which is supposed to be the U turnaround. Um, I don't have the plan. Is that, is part of that plan to have that striped as no parking? Because you've seen it, Sandra, cars had to back out and they get stacked up because somebody's parked right near the main building on a rainy day. So is there additional striping, no parking for close to the building? <coughs> All we, Mike, all we did is stripe out where the parking is. We didn't 
um, stripe, no parking, because then the whole property would be just painted everywhere. We'll, we'll um, I'm not sure exactly what, what, because we have to make some changes there anyway, because the handicap parking changed a bit. Right. Um, what do you want to do? Talking about right I in front of the main entrance. I can tell you. I haven't talked hey, correct, to Chris yet, my, but I can uh, tell you my yes, I've <laughs> observed it personally. Is just that needs to be striped somehow. For, for yeah. no, I'm not talking the whole site, Chris. I'm just saying that here. Yeah. That seems to be a. We certainly uh, want to control it. So. We certainly want to solve that problem. It is sporadic. There's, you can go for days and weeks and nothing goes wrong, and then there'll be one day when people will do it. I don't know why. But that's part of staffing and part of management. That can happen anywhere on any project. So I think um, it's just general public safety. But yes, we will attend to that. Um, otherwise, people can't use the facility. You know, it's just sort of, I don't want to say common sense. But um, again, as Kate said, we need a thing reflected on the plan and a, and a plan to do it, whether it's conditioned or not. So I had a couple other quick questions Go ahead. more for staff. So. Jeff, I just want to make sure I gave you a chance to look back through the April whatever second packet, and there's there's a couple things of you know this is a this is a longer list of uses than it's under the ZBA, um, and maybe it's just more detail on types of recreation. But it would actually be good to have kind of this list shown with allowed uses, and then what's under the ZBA. Because it doesn't, I'm trying to match it up to what's in the April 2nd record from the ZBA variance, and I can't follow it. So, one of the things that we can do, and I had a, actually our town planner raised a similar concern. He was also trying to match up um, the uses and the draft decision, as was uh, some of the comments were raised by the applicant's attorney, um, with the zoning board decision versus what was permitted. So, we could certainly. Um, take a hard look at that and work with the applicant make sure we're all on the same page before a decision gets finalized yeah and then two other ones in the April 2nd packet I think is represented or proposed by the applicant on certain conditions there was a, a three month time frame to propose signage and then a six month uh, installation after approval this talks about a March 19th installation but but in the suggested conditions in April offered by the applicant, it was kind of a three month to proposal. Um, so I'm confused kind of what the timeline is for uh, these proposed conditions as six months after some approval on or before March of 2019. Am I reading that correctly? No. Can, can I answer that? The, sure. The, we have to submit an application by March 18th for a comprehensive sign permit application to this board that uh, and then we have to complete the work within six months after the permit is ultimately approved and the appeal period is up. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It was different than your April representation. So we have conceded. Why, why do you feel that you may need more time for both drafting and then executing? Well, I don't think we ever discussed a time limit on the installation of the signs once the approval was granted. That fell out of the sky as far as I'm concerned. I don't have a problem, but it confuses me when we have a condition issued on a permit that hasn't been issued. Um, so I'm, you know, you can put anything in there, but the final sign um, application and, and permit approval, I would assume, would dictate the details of that. And I don't know, I'm not an attorney, but I would assume it might even supersede this. But I thought it was just an agreement amongst us that this is the time frame to get the signs done, four months to apply, and then six months to build it. And we don't know how long the board will take to review it. So our position was we just wanted to have a date certain by which they had to start that process and make an application to the board. If the board has a, a different preference or? Because there's two types of signage. There's a directional signage, which should be part of this application and then you were going to come back with actual signage to go on the buildings those things which would require a sign permit building signs or monument signs require the permit we will we will submit that application when it gets approved tonight we'll submit the application by march 18 and then we'll install them quick like a bunny we don't need six months in order to get them done but if there's 
you know, if there's yeah. snow and ice during the time where we need to put it in, we need more time than that. I think that six months was in there just to be practical. It can be less than six months. But as Chris said, that permit hasn't been issued yet. Well, understood, and there really shouldn't be anything necessarily in here. But Mike, is your concern the directional signage? No, it's just, you know, based on this decision, we're a year away from signage if I take the, the you know, and, and we've talked about that being a key provision of this, of where we're at. So uh, it's okay. I don't, you know, three months, March, end of March is now five months, I guess. So um, I, I would suggest since the applicant represented it in April that we go back to the three-month uh, provision. Still giving you time for installation if something gets screwed up on assembly and, and installation, but I see no reason outside of three months why we can't get a plan from you. So, for signage for no, you're files. gonna you're gonna have the application in by March, right? It's not a plan. You're gonna have the application in. Actually, you're gonna have the application in for in February, in order to meet your March 18th meeting date. We have to have our um, our materials in well by February, February 24. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. That's fair. All right. The last item, the last item again, referring to the April packet there, the applicant represented O&M and maintenance plans for uh, Avid Mill as being representative for use here, uh, but I don't see them referenced in the doc set. I think they were supplemental materials, and are we still using those or referencing them here? We didn't hang up on you. We're just thinking. <laughs> There's a long-term pollution prevention and an O and M plan, and they were submitted in April as representative of what would be used here, so to speak. So, do you want a potential decision to refer to those documents, which might then get updated upon whatever stormwater measures are actually? <laughs> Yeah, because right now we don't have a we have a repair plan and it's going to show in a plan. I don't I don't see any listing here under thirteen on page whatever that talks about any O and M and reference. And I think the applicant said refer to this plan and gave us you know twenty pages of material. So okay, I just want to be cognizant of the fact that we don't have a stormwater management permit in front of us here, and this is something that the applicant's volunteering to do. It's a question the applicant. You provided these materials, so what what are we doing with them, Paul? Chris, do, um, do you want to update or provide a similar O and M plan once the work is done to document what work would be on maintenance would be ongoing? Okay. 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 I, Mike, are you? Satisfied with the as built and the proposal plans as submitted in April because that's what we have now. <laughs> Nothing's been revised as far as I can tell, other than uh, one for signage for di directional signage. The, the stormwater plan and the and the signage plan were both updated during the middle of the summer. The, uh, we've got the we've got the dates in the draft decision of the revision date through, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did we actually re get these? In revised yeah. through. Um, they were submitted. You got them so long ago; they're old news. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. forgotten about it. Seven thirteen. Submitted. Did we get them? Revised. Oh. And yeah, you have them. Yep. Now that we have electronic copies, I can't keep track of what we've received. Well, we just need to save your packets <laughs> on your Chromebooks so that you have them for easier okay. reference. I, am I hearing concerns from the board that you don't feel as though you've seen or remember the information or I'm just trying to get a handle if you feel as though you have enough to close or do you need to see the final attachments to go with the decision um, I would suggest we have enough to close I don't think we have new information I think I'd probably uh, respectfully that we take another look to the conditions based on what we just talked about and clean that up and yeah, I have some questions about the draft. Okay. 
Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody in the audience have any comments on the plans? If there aren't any, I would like to just review the uh, draft decision for questions that we have about it. Seeing nobody jumping up. Mike, do you what, do, what comments do you have about the draft decision? No, I think I raised most of them, Kate. Um, don't others, I'll come back if I need to. Okay. Uh, no, I think uh, okay. clarification and questions I had were discussed tonight. In the same boat. I had a question on page three, item five. This is project summary. It says several of the uses listed in the project summary require other relief. What's the relief? This, I don't want to speak for you. This is uh, the town planner's comment when he was, I believe, uh, comparing what was uh, thrown in this application request versus uh, what's permitted by right in that zoning district versus relief granted by the zoning board. So it's just, I think, a placeholder to reconcile and make sure that this board isn't approving something that isn't covered by either the zoning board's decision or what's allowed by right. So this goes into Mike's request that you yes. review. Okay. okay. Right, Josh, that was yes. your... More findings. Do you have a question if we have more findings? Uh, uh, that was uh, more as a uh, re uh, reminder to uh, me um, that that isn't uh, complete okay, so at this point. Okay, so you're going to give us a revised draft? Yes. The other stuff? Yes. Uh, on the site plan review criteria, is everybody comfortable with number two on the top of page five, where it states we find that the approved use to be less intensive than the previous active use, and that a more detailed evaluation of pedestrian ve vehicular safety could be deferred until such time as the applicant proposes other changes in use? Is that to state that whatever was approved by the ZBA were okay, but if they add more uses, we need to look at safety again? Um, that was something that was added by by the um, applicants' uh, council, I uh, uh, believe. Um, that was also added to uh, criteria numbers eight and nine and uh, 10, um, and that um, was not on all of the drafts. Um, and so I, um, I highlighted that because I was uh, not entirely clear uh, whether or not that should stay. Um, if that came from the uh, board, if yeah. it came from the applicant um, and so I uh, wanted to uh, bring that up personally like for uh, number nine I would prefer that it's not in there I, I think that uh, traffic is probably going to be about the same given all these uses like the restaurant and such especially when the restaurants open um, I don't know. Keep in mind the prior use was three shifts a day, 24 hours a day. We're pretty much just, I by guess you could say two a. shifts. 5 a.m. till 11 p.m. or whatever. Yeah, but we don't have 800 or 1,000 people working there. It's a lot less. Yeah, but you have a restaurant. I'm, it's, it's, it's the, not the total, it's how many are there at once. Sandra works three shifts, doesn't she? <laughs> I know. <laughs> So we have, okay, you're going to submit a comprehensive sign special, perm or special permit, uh, sign installation, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, we lost oh, him. He said 9 o'clock. Okay. Did it die? 
battery. <laughs> okay. Um, Ten percent left. What's the? Uh, do you wanna? So we need. Wire. So it sounds as though the draft needs to you have revisions anyway mm -hmm. before we actually vote on the draft decision. The question is, is there more material or can we close the public? Did we get your check? You, you got my yeah. check from my personal checking account. <coughs> <coughs> can we cash it tomorrow I can't, morning? I can't have lunch tomorrow. Do you so want to <laughs> swap that out tomorrow morning? Tell me. But um, I think that the instruction you've given to the staff regarding the revisions. Yes. Are, are clear enough. I would like to think that uh, we we can vote so that Mr. Yule doesn't have to pay me to come back here again for another another meeting. As much as I enjoy this, we love you too. Uh, yeah. But Mike. Uh, yeah. I think we have enough to close, Paul. The primary concern is it lists uses and so forth, and and uh, other materials as part of the submission that were unclear whether it to be included or not. So, and and I'd rather we simply try. To Rather, we simply, it's nothing, this, it, what you're asking for is different than a said decision to be to reduced to writing, I think. So I would rather we clean it up a little bit and uh, all know what we're voting on. So. And have plans that reflect the requested clarification? Well, I'm just saying it's not uncommon for decisions to say the applicant shall update the plan to show X, Y, Z. Yep. And in terms of the language regarding those uses which were permitted by the variance and which are permitted by the zoning bylaw, that language is already in here. You're just asking staff to move it around. We need to finish this tonight. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Dylan? Aye. Kate, aye. Darren? Aye. Mike? Aye. Are we comfortable with voting given what is there tonight or do you want to delay the vote until the next meeting? I'm comfortable as long as the, you know, with the discussion comments to be made or updated from comments tonight, as long as the applicant is. Yes. So we have that you will update the plans to show the exact Footprints for buildings 17 and 18. We I show, show something as regard to that no parking area on the plan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, be very clear at 173 seats for the restaurant. Yep. Anything else, Mike, that they need to update? Clear up the references to the O&M plan and what document we're including in the decision. Did someone say the O&M plan would be submitted when the work is complete? That's what I yeah, thought yeah, I heard. You, yes, but just making, you want a reference, reference. to what that, that will be submitted. Yeah. Will be submitted. Yeah. Yeah. Clean it up. Okay. And our longstanding request for it to be stamped by an engineer. Yep. Well, it, it, no. no, it's not going to get stamped by an engineer. I thought that's, I thought you said, represented that all along. That that no, to the contrary. The engineer said it's really nothing for him to do. The O and M plan is O and M plan. They don't stamp those. No, but no, other plans. Plan. The site plan. It already is stamped, but it's not an engineering design. That's the whole point. We've been through that one and we closed that issue up. I thought because our we have to have a stamped one, right, for our regulations. We're in that gray area now, right? So this is. A bit unusual because right now it's change of use for inside yeah. and the question is for the external awesome. improvements I mean there are certain things that typically you would want to have benefit of at least a professional opinion as to say locations and methods of any pedestrian safety features um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a full plan with a stamp it's just what does this board need and what do you feel comfortable relying on for information to make a, a decision? Well, I think we've been out there. I mean, I, I think the plan you see here sums up kind of the site out there as far as I can tell from a, from a high level anyway. I, I, yeah. So can we give them a, a certain amount of time then to update the drawings that they are providing? 
with the information on them? You could. And not necessarily official plans. If, are we, if we're comfortable with just non-engineering stamps? Hey, hey folks, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. You know, this hasn't been before us since April, and we're still discussing whether we have the right plan, a stamp plan, and so forth. Could we suggest taking two weeks to clean up the, the darn documentation so we know what we're voting on? And then vote next time? I. It's a simple question. Nice. I, it's been five months. I know. Months. I know. I'm not coming back. It should be quick. Mm -hmm. We've closed the public hearing. There's no more input. If you input. want to discuss this all you want, it's fine. We've been here seven times. Yeah. I don't well, want to come back. And, and my dear friend Paul is not into charitable donations. We've already spent more just on sitting here. You've been, here four, you've been here four times. This is the fifth. Um, well, whatever. Um, I just want, all I was hoping you would say is add the following information to the plans in the same manner that we've done everything else and not have to go back to who's stamping what. The information we've submitted has been acceptable up to now. I'm not sure why we're adding this all over again. It's been resolved and it's been discussed and um, I'll update the plan. We'll put the notes on there that you've requested and we'll get it done and then you can vote it and this is an unusual project. We can't drag an engineer into it or it'll just never stop. They have um, special requirements that they have to adhere to and this project doesn't meet them. And Jeff and Paul, I mean, is it? I thought you had represented it in a previous comment tonight that you were going to do that. That's what I heard. That's what I thought I heard you say is that you were going to get them stamped as we had requested when you were making your presentation. I'm, I'm sorry, that. then that's a misunderstanding on my yeah, part. That's the only reason I, I made would, my comment is I thought you had said it, but I, I wouldn't want to mislead anybody. That, Go ahead. You know, that, that gives the applicant, the applicant's attorney, a chance to review the final document so that it is unequivocally clear, you know, of what's in the decision. So, yeah. okay. Yep, I agree because I was hoping to get a refresher since it has been since April that we did meet with you and I know you've had discussions with others that we weren't privy to but so let's let staff work with you any modifications that we have you need to update your findings and such you're yeah. gonna modify whatever you want to call these things that your plans, drawings, whatever you want to call them, and then uh, we can vote on it next time. And maybe uh, for staff, if we can, if you can provide us with all the appropriate document or plans and such that are in here as a refresher so that we can remind ourselves on what the finalized versions are of everything that we're including in here. Is the applicant able to provide your final materials at least a week in advance of the next meeting? October sure. 22nd. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Well, yeah, is there I a motion? I would make a motion to continue the public hearing. The Did hearing's close. closed. It's closed. Just to oh, continue the discussion continue the discussion to the next meeting October 22nd I don't, we, I don't think we need to we closed it we just posted right. this non public okay. hearing item right Jeff that's right. correct good right we're mm -hmm. hoping to get it on our next which is October 22nd okay thank you thank you Thanks. Mike do you need to Thanks all for your accommodation. Sorry for the distance again. Thanks, Mike. On uh, curiosity, were there any of the general business items that you wanted to be able to chime in on? Uh, Juniper Hill, no, no. With Juniper Hill, continuous. I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, because yeah, like the uh, I, I imagine the uh, input to the uh, ZBA, we might continue or something. Okay. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Our next item is a, a site plan review for the cell tower at 11 Brookside Road. 
the applicant has re penny. since we now only have three members of the board who can vote on it the applicant has requested that we withdraw the application or that they withdraw without prejudice so we just need to vote on the request, the request for withdrawal without and, prejudice and we can all vote on that you may okay is there oh, i'll wait for darren to come back then that would be ideal <laughs> Since you have to recuse okay. yourself. I do apologize. I do have to uh, leave momentarily. Do I have to abstain from this vote? You don't have to. Okay. Just but if we have an extra member here. It helps. It's just accepting a withdrawal request. So. How can I do one of those recusal things? How do I get, do I, can I get one of those? You're recused by not showing up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Or leaving. <laughs> or by telling Jeremy to come. Yeah, right. Yes, it's Jeremy. It's not hockey season yet. It, it, it's, but it's coming up. I will, and I won't send, I don't send him for games, but I do, I will have some personal conflicts throughout the year, and Jeremy more than welcomes the opportunity to come in. He loves it. He wishes he had more opportunities. Yes. He's, not a day goes by where he asks me, oh, can I please, please, please go to the planning board meeting? I know what Mr. Titus is here for. What item are you here for? Yeah, my name's Craig. I just want to know, so I know if you need to be out of order, then. Uh, A&R. Yeah, it's an A&R. Oh, okay. Uh, at 92 Nutting Road. Okay. So your number B. Okay. So we're waiting for you so that we can uh, vote. We have, is there a uh, motion to accept the uh, request to withdraw without prejudice so move Due to lack of quorum Due to lack of quorum so move second second all in favor since mike's not on we can just vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed I, abstain i guess i <laughs> so you, it's up to you yeah i mean i are you voting i guess i okay, okay so we have four zero zero uh mr I haven't voted on this Palmer's one before, first. So it's anything. sorry <laughs> Although might, Mr. Palmer might let them go out of order. Brad, Mr. Brief. Palmer, do you mind? I think theirs is going to take less time than your request. Oh, I don't. Okay. You've been here so long already. Okay. Oh, thank you. Roddy pays himself by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> we are at general business item B, which is an ANR request for endorsement of a uh, ANR something or approval not required plan for 92 Nutting Road. There you go. Na name and address, please. Uh, Craig Grimm. I live at 98 Nutting Road with my wife, Sheila, here. Okay. Um, it was my dad's property. He bought in 1956. And uh, my wife and I got an end piece for scouting these plans uh, 22 years ago. But now <clears throat> the my dad passed away three and a half years ago. And we can't afford the taxes on the place. Um, and we want to put conservatively uh, two house lots in there and leave the existing home, my parents' home, uh, that's 100 years old. Um, all the engineering has been done, the deep holes. Um, there's 210 feet of frontage. Uh, you should have copies of these plans. Yeah. Yep. It was done through Ross Associates in Harvard, Mass. Uh, Neil Gorman was the engineer, and uh, Ray Dick from the health department did the last deep hole um, right on, on top of my dad's well. So uh, we're losing the well there, but we need a septic site for the existing, existing pants. Uh, but now there's town water going up the street. so. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, this application was reviewed uh, by our staff in consultation with the building commissioner. We didn't determine there to be any zoning issues, and okay. it appears to meet the statutory criteria for endorsement. Great. Any questions, comments? Do you have any? No. That was, uh, Perfect. No. Any from the board? No. Do I have a motion to approve the A&R plan with no 
determination as to compliance. Yes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? There you go. Thank you. Thanks. Your turn, Roddy. Is it Roddy? Yeah. I got the right one. Jenny Road. This is a, a discussion of a request from you concerning Jenny Richards Road. That's correct. Uh, my name is Roddy Palmer for Tiding Corporation. And um, I guess Paul and I have had a rather long term discussion on how best to bring Jenny Richards Road for acceptance uh, before town meeting, more recently with Jeff as well. Um, there's a number of items that had been left standing in terms of work to be done, that being um, one inch top course, uh, granite curbing, and a sidewalk on one side. The, well, one, one of the problems that has, um, kept further progress from being made is primarily the, de um, the binder course has deteriorated radically for a number of reasons. And so we are proposing rather, uh, none of us saw the wisdom of putting the new top course in the curbing in, uh, on top of a deteriorated base course. So what we had proposed uh, and thought was the best solution was rather than do the work that, that was left to be done, that we substitute a new binder course in uh, rather than install the granite curbing and the sidewalk. And we felt that was the best way to move forward with getting it ready for um, acceptance. So for that reason, we had this discussion to uh, request a, a waiver of the granite curbing and sidewalk and fully replace the uh, binder course. Okay. And so, Madam Chair, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Roddy is correct to say that we've been uh, working on getting this road accepted uh, at the behest of the many residents who are out there for a couple of years now in a course, uh, as Roddy described, for uh, reasons not entirely under his control, the base course is insufficient. Uh, it would just be a waste. Uh, but uh, from a business perspective, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any business sense uh, for Roddy to uh, do all of that work that was uh, originally approved, but instead those items that the residents didn't want the sidewalk and the vertical, the, the slope granite curb. Financially, that made sense for Tiden to uh, put in, reinvest in the base course, reclaim it, uh, cover up all those trenches where water and gas were subsequent, subsequently installed, and then end up with a, a road that has a, a, uh, um, a, a, a monolithic asphalt berm like we've been installing in other places in town. Cape Cod Burden? Yes, yeah, style, but it's monolithic, which is the problem we've had with, with asphalt berms is if they're installed on top of the base course, uh, the first snowplow that even just gets near it, uh, the, the berm can smell it coming down the street and it just crumbles. It falls up. They, uh, our highway superintendent likes to call them berm loaves. Uh, like they look like that big loaf of bread you see in the side mm -hmm. of the parking lots because they're installed on top monolithic is actually uh, placed at the same time that the top course is placed uh, so it's one part of it and it it will bounce much it'll handle the uh, snow plows a lot better and it's on the inside radius as well which is important to note so this was a solution that, uh, as you can see in your packets, w was supported uh, unanimously by the current residents uh, that are out there. Uh, it gives Roddy the opportunity to go out uh, and get the work done, uh, theoretically even before our November 15th deadline, if uh, contractors, weathers, and 
everything else can line up uh, for acceptance uh, uh, at a subsequent annual town meeting. They'll have to put in the base. We'd like to watch that go through the winter, uh, see if there are any defects in the subsoils. If not, come back in the spring and uh, put the top course down. Uh, so that was the current plan. It's, it resolves the problem of this road just having lingered for these many years while we try to figure out the best solution. So. And the monolithic berm will suffice for um, stormwater? Right, That's we just installed it on Main Street as a part of our town project and, uh, and elsewhere in town, and we, we find them to be sufficient okay. for stormwater purposes especially. So just typically because I have to have to bolt. So I think the discussion item tonight, I think Mr. Palmer is trying to handle and see if this board is at least amenable and open-minded to this solution to move things forward. Because typically what would be required is if you're trying to do something different than what got originally approved, you would look for a modification um, of the original approval. And I think before any paperwork or anything is filed, he's trying to get a, not trying to put words in your mouth, but get a sense of, is this something that the board might be open to considering, given that all of the residents are in favor of this approach. Have you um, met any resistance else, elsewhere besides the residents or any, has anybody said much about it? Most of the discussions I've had have been with Paul. Yeah, I did, I, I do know that the highway superintendent uh, uh, he, I, I spoke with him earlier today, in fact, on this issue, and, uh, you know, was not, didn't have it at his fingertips the exact information as to whether or not there was, you know, what there was, what was supposed to be out there originally. Uh, I can follow up with him. Uh, he, I, I would anticipate, I, I don't know what his, what his, thoughts would be but, but you haven't heard you haven't heard anything no. negative okay well yeah I I can't speak for the highway superintendent but you know it's we can so. certainly ask for his if the board wants benefit of his opinion we can certainly get so it so this is really to get a sense of the board tonight. yeah this is just non-binding discussion right you have the jurisdiction to grant the waivers but that's what would need to happen in order for if if I following based on my conversations with with Roddy and the decision makers at Titan that you know they need some kind of understanding they will they go ahead and do all this work <laughs> that yeah. uh, you are important to the conversation is that we are holding a bond or a <coughs> some surety uh, uh, you know that doesn't cover the amount that we, we would need to go out and put the sidewalk in to put in slope granite curb to put in you know, the base course and the top course wouldn't even come close what? to do that. But I think what we do have, I would anticipate they would want to get back if they were to go out and spend all this money putting in the, the road, the asphalt, the, the, the uh, monolithic berm, and the top course. Thank you. And the uh, residents also mentioned foregoing street lights too. Just that might have been on the plans. It, it, there, there wasn't uncommon okay. in that era to have street light, lights, but I, none of the residents. 14 houses. Right. <clears throat> right. I, don't, I don't see a problem with it. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, yeah. I, mean I, I think a general comment, it would be nice if we, um, I think this is the second or third thing of this nature that's come back years or decades after the fact with there being a request to do something that's less than what the plans originally called for I think it would be great if, if we had a check and balance with this board where we weren't letting things get this far removed right I mean it's obviously not not great for residents yeah we've uh, certainly stopped if I may madam chair we've stopped this from happening going forward yeah uh, with with amendments to our regulations over time and paying attention to you know how far and how long projects go out there without amending yeah the surety yeah. uh, so the, the we we are capturing that we have taken uh, during my tenure of 14 16 
17 roads off the unaccepted list and we're not looking to add any. Yeah. Yep. So I think this sounds uh, yeah. sounds good for the residents. Matt Lewin will be happy if yes. you take right. another one off the list. And the town is currently plowing this and everything? I mean, yeah. Pardon? The town no. is currently, oh, is actually. the town currently plowing this? In, in this case, it does, at, at the time this subdivision was approved, it was the policy of the town to plow subdivisions roads uh, from the time uh, the binder went in. Subsequently, they changed that. So, if it was done today, it would be the responsibility uh, of the uh, applicant to plow it. But uh, Jenny Richards Road was done at a time when the town plowed subdivision roads, okay. which they will stop doing as soon as that road <laughs> gets into any much worse of a yeah. condition than it is. Right. Yeah. I, I have no problems with the request, especially since all of the neighborhood. Neighbors are, are willing to forego the sidewalks and and, the, and we have a good replacement for the curbing to ensure that there aren't going to be drainage or other water related issues. So. Okay. Do you great? So think you have the feedback you need. So you yes. you'll, you'll come and just submit a revise request for waivers. From yes, actually, I can work with uh, yes. Mr. Pollard. He has a put some correspondence together to that effect already so so you can start looking for somebody to do the work we're here again October 22nd maybe we can vote on your request at that time okay. Great. Good luck. Great. Thank, you. thank you and thank you for Thanks. taking the work to uh, get it up to snow well, thank you Josh is now in charge All right. The training wheels right out the door. <laughs> we have a request. Good night, Roddy. Good night. Yeah. Good night, Jeff. Good night, Paul. Thank you. For uh, from uh, 25 Milo Road, a request for determination of an insubstantial change. Uh, they want to modify the building to enlarge the rear entrance. I was surprised that we actually had to vote on a, right. a building design change. Seems seems pretty minor to me, yeah. and I have no issue with it. Uh, a minor administrative change. Do you know why we have to come back for a building? Just because they showed it on the plan? Is that the um, only reason? In the um, in the decision from 2016, I believe. Um, there was a uh, condition that any ch changes, um, they would have to come back to the uh, board for a determination. Okay. Um, so I know because it was a special building for the shrine and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any discussion, no. comments? No, pretty minor. Is there a uh, motion to approve the request? for determination of an insubstantial change, and this would then be an administrative yes. change. Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay. Approved 4-0. Next item is Downing Place, a request for release of covenant for lots 1, 3, and 5. Yes. Um, How did I miss this? <coughs> Bless you. There is um, the uh, documentation. Um, they are asking, as you stated, um, a uh, release for uh, lots one, three, and five. Um, when was this approved? 1998. 1998. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a bit of an old one. Yes. Is there any surety that has to be done? Um, there is, to my knowledge, there is not. Um, 
I can check on that to be positive, um, but I do not believe uh, that there is. One, three, where's five? Where's five? Is that like this? As lots one, three, and five, I see one and three on the plan. I don't see five. Uh, that is a very good point. I don't, so I'm happy to release lots one and three. Did yeah, they mean um, one, two, and three, or is two already there? I will oh, I, oh, I know. It's it's uh, one down in place, three down in place, and five down in place. Aha. Yes, yes. That's... So maybe that's what they meant. Yes. Um, there is not anything to act on uh, this evening. Um, this was um, uh, just a discussion um, that if the, the covenant, uh, right. board uh, thought that they uh, would act uh, favor, uh, favorably uh, next time, I uh, would have that um, for the board to act on. So this was, I'm trying to remember what was in the, okay, it was a covenant that was uh, it's it with the uh, registry, so they just want a letter saying that they finalized. Because it was confusing because one one paragraph in it said that it was binding for generations to come, and then another paragraph in the covenant said that it could be released. So it was kind of confusing. So this covenant is here. Is that there is a... Uh Financial? Is it like a bond, or is it simply? Uh, like an agreement. It's oh, before it's my time. Yeah, we have the requirement to install monuments. Right, and they didn't want to have to do it in the beginning, right? This thing does not like. Oh, really? <laughs> the street's working well, it's just maintained well, it just doesn't have monuments. Yes. Once the monuments are installed or waived, the covenant can be released so that... Uh, uh, correct, yes. Yeah, okay. Is it item number four that's a problem? No lot shall be sold or conveyed and no building shall be commenced or placed on any lot unless a release of these covenants is executed by a majority of the members of the planning board. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. But I bet the houses are already there. Yeah, but it, somebody just wants to sell it, right? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> someone wants to sell their house. And they realize, yes. yeah. oops, we have a... Uh, we have a, a little bit of a problem. Yes. Yeah. The so if it's just a matter of... The, we've done this before. We've waived the... Uh, the monuments. Monuments. So what do you want us to do tonight? Um, to um, uh, to give um, an idea, I suppose, of how the board uh, uh, feels um, on uh, this particular uh, uh, matter, and um, if uh, uh, favorably, then I'll. Uh, bring the proper uh, uh, paperwork and we will sign it yes and then you okay so does anybody have reservations about uh, approving their request to, to forego the additional monuments so that and then uh, directing staff to draw up the correct paperwork to file with the registry I do not I mean the staff did you guys have any comments on this while reviewing it? That it was, you know, 
Uh, there were uh, none. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue with it. It's been there 20 years. If highway department had a problem, they would have let you know, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you, so, do you need a vote? Um, I do not. Okay. Yeah, there was a there was a bond which was released back in O two. So I think if there was a real major issue, they wouldn't have released that bond. Yeah. Back then. Oh yeah. Well, the other one was released yeah. too. So back in O <laughs> two. Okay. There you go. That. Next item. Jeff Bram has uh, requested uh, that we do not discuss his two items. Yeah. Tonight, he'd like to come back at a later time, and uh, maybe he can provide some material before he comes back to let us know what his concerns are. Yes. Yep. The other two items are the, uh, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeal is going to be discussing two requests for uh, age restricted housing. When does their uh, public hearing on these open? Uh, they are on the schedule for the uh, next z zoning board, the which the third week. I don't have uh, a calendar in front of me. I apologize for that. Um, but they are on the um, agenda. Okay, um, I would like this board to provide input because I, I think it's these dessert these require input from us okay but I would like to have Mike Green present as well so you can get comments from the full board so maybe you can relay to the ZBA that not for this one but for their next meeting mm -hmm. the uh, planning board would like to provide input to their discussions there was a letter from Melissa Robbins I saw yeah. that in here, so she was saying that she could always come. So they yes, they won't be here. after this one. They won't be meeting again t until the third week in November. So we would have two opportunities before then, two two opportunities for her to come and and talk to us briefly. Yeah, uh, I could certainly uh, contact her. Um, and have I don't her, uh, yeah. come in. If she if she desires, especially after she hears the, the first hearing from the ZBA. Are you all okay with delaying the discussion? Absolutely. Yes. That'll give yes. you a chance to review. We actually have a section of our bylaws, which is for the senior housing overlay district. And since these are both senior housing, I recommend that we all review that section of our bylaws. It's under special overlay districts. I think okay. that that would be informative hmm. to compare what's in our bylaws to what they've been proposing. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else that the board wants to discuss? That's everything for general uh, uh, yep. business. Correspondence reports and updates. Um, the only updates um, that I have um, are the um, the department is uh, um, uh, updating the uh, website. Uh, one of the things that uh, we are in the process of is creating a page um for each project um so if you go to the uh land use management uh, page on the left there will be um a uh, link to um a page that has all of the projects the ones that, under discussion yes uh, okay yeah um all of the projects uh for the uh, planning board and the uh, Zoning board, okay. um, and uh, you'll be able to click on a particular project. Um, that'll bring you to a page that will have all of the uh, documentation, um, uh, uh, maps, um, uh, things like that. Um, 
I don't have all of them up right now. Um, I'm in the process of, of uh, putting those up, um, but it will hopefully um, enable the public to be uh, more um, informed. It would be easier for them to find the information. I yes. think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, we are also creating an FAQ page um, and uh, a page explaining the overall process, um, uh, things like that, uh, trying to uh, make the whole process a bit easier, um, hopefully uh, quicker. Um, Great. So, uh, yeah. I know they talked process. before about doing a little guide on how to submit a prop, what the submittal process is and stuff. Yep. So yep. having that electronically will be better than paper. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Great. Um, the only other uh, comment is, is there um, the uh, f fall of 2018 schedule for the uh, c c citizen planner uh, training uh, collaborative um, is out. Um, there are quite a few that are uh, reasonably uh, close by. Um, so if, if anybody on the board uh, wants more um, info on those uh, courses, um, I have the schedule here. I believe the schedule's in your packet as well. I have taken most of them and I find I found them useful and I need to go back and refresh myself on oh. some of them but because it yep. was like a long time ago I took them but yeah yeah but they and they do give you good material like yes. on special permits and mm -hmm. variances yep. they, and actually on the zoning act they they it's a thick packet that they provide you yep yeah they uh, they're courses are uh, quite uh, uh, good and you get reimbursed yes they are $35 a piece but the uh, department and, and uh, will s s certainly uh, reimburse you for that yeah. I may do that Great. yeah especially if it's close like Havel I know yeah. did you have anything I saw you just uh, looking well on the 17th of October, Wednesday night, the NIMCOG annual meeting is going to be held at the Tuxbury Country Club, so I'll be going. <coughs> there's a dinner, there's a Eileen Donahue is going to be the guest speaker. So, um, and we'll be in sunny New Mexico. I will, be, I will be in attendance. I did have a question, because I was at the um, Board of Selectmen meet, the last Board of Selectmen meeting. And I know there's going to be, I think it's a, a warrant article requesting funding from the Board of Health for monitoring of uh, Newport materials, the oh, asphalt yeah. plant, which made me think we have not received an update on the automatic monitoring, how that's going. So we sh should probably have that as a discussion. We should have a discussion item on that. Um, cause the last we heard was last year they were having some issues getting the equipment installed, but we never got an update on how the testing went or anything, if it's actually in operation now. Okay. And I'm curious to know when whoever, selectman and uh, town manager, pick the date for the fall town meeting because I want to write a letter to them before that time saying please next in 2019 do not put it on the night when we're having a planning board meeting. I've, I've asked that them to not do it in the past oh, yeah. and I just okay. I just want to get it there at the right time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I guess my question <coughs> So the town meeting is special town meeting does not have a requirement for when it is that's up to the right. selectmen to determine the date but that's coming right up on the 15th right yeah 
So for this year, we're stuck. That's why our meeting got moved to the 22nd. Right, so we've got that asphalt issue. So if you, you're not gonna be there, right? Yeah, so somebody, I'm sure the question will come up. So if someone's should, gonna say, well, isn't that part of the settlement? Yeah. yeah. That Newport pays for all that stuff. So I guess that's my question. I guess I can ask Jeff. Yeah, I did. I would, wasn't. I had to leave, so I didn't actually hear the discussion. But you can always listen to the watch cat. Oh, from the board selection meeting. Yeah, I, it'll be like an hour and a half into the meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there anything else? Nope. Is there a motion? Do you have anything? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.